Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. Good morning. We are here at the AT&T Center, usually known as the home of the Spurs, but tonight it is going to be known for voter registration. I'm Max Massey. I'll explain. And a good morning to you. It is Tuesday. It is September 15th, and we begin with one of those kinds of topics that gets everybody talking. Everybody wants to chime in, and the headline on KSAT.com is 30 restaurants KSAT viewers want to open here in San Antonio. So they're presently not here and but they'd they, like them to come. Right, they want them here. And we got a huge viewer response for this story. Tons uh, and tons. Um, and there's the top vote yep, getter probably yeah. from most folks. Yeah, Waffle House. And so the Waffle House is a 24 seven uh, restaurant, uh, has locations across the nation, but not here in the Alamo City. So it looks like the closest we've come to getting the chain here was a pop-up food truck last year for National Waffle Week downtown. But now you're seeing all the other yes. posts and some of these you may have heard of before. Some of we looked up and they're legit. I mean, they're chains and stuff like that. Uh, Taco Bueno's on there. Mm -hmm. Brahms, uh, Tom and Chi, which I'd never heard of before, nor had I heard of chicken salad chick, but their menu looks fantastic. I, I think this is cute. Jalapeno tree. I haven't heard of that. Yeah, mo mostly in East Texas. The One of the other ones we're seeing a lot of on here, uh, Shakey's Pizza. I remember Shakey's as a kid growing up. Uh, near Travis Air Force Base out in California, and there are a number of shakies out in the uh, in the West Coast. Justin mentioned that one as well. He yes. would like to see that come back. Right. Uh, uh, Bojangles is another one we're seeing quite a few mentions yes. of. Bojangles reminds me a little bit of Popeyes in a way, but I think it has a few more offerings than Popeyes. Oh, I never I've never been there, but actually mm -hmm. there's a, a quite a few viewers who wanted to see that. I like this one that says, bring back Bonanza. So we, we used to have one. We used to. In San Antonio. A, a restaurant chain called Buca de Beppo. Maybe you've seen them up in Austin yes. or the Dallas area. We don't have one here. I think it would do pretty well. Um, Checkers is on here. White Castle. I've heard people talk about that before. Surprisingly, when people talk about White Castle, mm -hmm. a lot of times people bring up Crystal, which reminds me of White Castle burgers. They're very similar. Very similar. It's a different chain. I don't know. I kind of grew up with the McDonald's and the Chick-fil-A that we've been having here. <laughs> well, the, the ones that I would have added to the list, because I'm a big seafood mm -hmm. fan, is a couple of uh, East Coast places. One is called Legal Seafoods. Have you ever heard of that? No. And then you may have seen McCormick and Schmick's. Yeah. And, and I think there's one maybe in Houston. You see them usually in I the in-flight magazines. I was going to say Austin. Yeah, it's, point, it's possible. Downtown Austin, yeah. yeah that but, was pretty good. Yeah, yeah, so I'd love to see. But be a part of the conversation. You yes. can comment uh, on this article on KSAT.com. Yeah, it's very cool. For now, let's take a look at today's 9 at 9. Hurricane Sally is expected to make landfall tonight along the Mississippi-Alabama border as a Category 2 hurricane. If this one hits the coast at a Cat 2, I'm thinking we're going to have at least six to seven foot of water where we stand in that. Portland's air quality is now the worst in the world due to wildfires burning across the state. Officials are warning people that, quote, no one should be outside. A new study conducted by genetics company 23andMe suggests blood type is associated with coronavirus risk. A study found people with blood type O tend to test positive for the virus less frequently when compared to people with any other blood type. A top official in the Department of Health and Human Services is under fire for allegedly pressuring scientists to change their weekly reports on COVID-19 to better align with the president's optimistic message. A grand jury has indicted a Houston area police officer who shot and killed a woman in emotional distress last year. Juan De La Cruz is being charged with aggravated assault by a public servant. I think that he needs to be charged with murder. The Metropolitan Transit says one of its drivers has died after a battle with COVID-19. Harvey Faria had worked with Via for five years. The Dallas Stars are headed to the NHL Stanley Cup Finals for the first time in 20 years. The Stars beat the Las Vegas Golden Knights last night in overtime to advance. Apple is expected to introduce an update to its iPad and Apple Watch during their annual event today. But no new iPhone. New AirPods could also be unveiled. Walmart's new membership program launches today. Walmart Plus includes unlimited free delivery from stores, fuel discounts, and a scan and go feature for in-store shopping.
that would be interesting. That will be interesting. Oh, a couple other places mm. here that people would love to see. Uh, House of Pies, yes. Arnie's Pizza from Indianapolis, Cincinnati Chili, and this just sounds awesome. Stan's Donuts from Chicago. Yeah, speaking of donuts, also Voodoo Donuts from Austin. Austin. So at least you don't have to travel that far to try that one out. That's true. That is true. Speaking of uh, far, not that far, outside <laughs> with live cam here in the metro area, Justin Horn here with our forecast. Same song, second verse, uh, our Tuesday looking quite a bit like our Monday so far. Almost exactly the same. We're going to see a very similar day, other than we may see a couple of more isolated showers and storms this afternoon. So what's, what rain chances look like this week? They will step up some as we get later into the week. So I think Thursday and Friday probably our best chances right now. We have them pegged at about a 40% shot. Today just a 20% chance, a 30% chance. Tomorrow, then the rain chances fall off as we get into the weekend. 92 degrees today, 20% chance of a shower storm, partly cloudy, and it will be hot yet again. As far as rain goes right now, most of that is down across deep south Texas and out in the Gulf of Mexico. And of course, there on the edge of your screen, you see Sally moving a little bit closer to the Gulf Coast, but slowing down. That is going to be a huge issue because it is going to dump a ton of rain there east of New Orleans. And we'll talk more about that coming up here in just a few minutes. 78 degrees at the airport, 72 Bernie stage 70 in comfort. It was a nice morning, but it will be a hot afternoon. 92 that high temperature with northerly winds 5 to 15 guys. Thank you, Justin. Let's take a look at Transguide right now. There is Loop 410 out by San Antonio International Airport, uh, even moving well there on that merger ramp from 281 South. And top stories we're following today. We're still waiting to learn the name of the woman killed overnight during a crash in far east Bear County. Sheriff's office says the woman was speeding when she lost control of her truck and rolled it several times. Happened just after midnight on southbound FM 1518, not far from Loop 1604. Deputies tell us the truck took out some poles and rolled about 75 yards before coming to a stop. The woman was ejected from the truck and pronounced dead at the scene. A witness told investigators they were coming from a party in the area. Right now, it's not clear if alcohol played a factor in that crash. Bear County Commissioner's Court will be meeting this morning to finalize the county's 2020-2021 budgets. The proposed budget totals around $1.78 billion. It has gotten some negative feedback from Bear County constables. That's because the budget would cut half of the deputy constable positions and decrease their work workload by 15%. County officials say the move reduced duplicate efforts and unnecessary costs, saving the county about $2.7 million. Officials have also suggested reducing the security staff at the Bear County Courthouse. Commissioner's Court is scheduled to begin at 10 this morning. We'll be watching it closely and have an update you for you coming up in our later newscasts. Election Day is getting closer and closer, and a lot of nonpartisan and nonprofit organizations are doing what they can to make sure as many people as possible can participate. Our masked Max Massey joins us live from the AT&T Center. Max, what's going on out there? Good morning, guys. I'm wearing the Spurs mask. This is usually the home of the Spurs, but tonight it is going to be the home of voter registration. Joined here, Charlie from Move Texas. So, Charlie, what is the game plan for tonight? Well, tonight's game plan is Move Texas is teaming up with the San Antonio Spurs to get as many folks registered as possible here in San Antonio. As you know, COVID has made it extraordinarily difficult for people to access voter registration where they might do it on a college campus or at a concert at the DMV. So we're making it safe and secure for folks to get registered ahead of this critical election. Six o'clock tonight, what do the logistics look like? Yep, folks can follow the signs over here to the AT&T Center over to lot three. We'll have four different lanes of voter registration. We got 50 volunteers on the ground tonight who are gonna be masked up and ready to meet you at your car, get you to sign that voter registration form and send you on your way. After you're registered and ready to vote, you can park, take some socially distant photos, get a little elbow with the coyote, <laughs> um, and get a vote t-shirt uh, from the Spurs. Perfect, Charlie, thank you so much. Thank you. And guys, that is far from it. We're gonna have more logistics coming up at 9.30. Mark, Stephanie. Max, I wish you could get a little elbow action for us with the, the coyote. Yeah, is he there? I'll, it's a long morning, guys. Just wait for it. <laughs> okay. okay. We shall be patient. Thank you, Max. Thank you. 907, 78 degrees still ahead on GMSA at 9. People have been spending a lot more time on their computers, and scammers are taking advantage of it. How to protect yourself against tech support scams in this week's Money It's Personal. Today marks the start of Hispanic Heritage Month, and we're celebrating by taking a look at some of the most influential Latinos in San Antonio. Eric Hernandez shows us who made the list later in our newscast. 
and check it out. A terrifying wake up call for a man in Massachusetts. A bear coming a little too close for comfort. David Sears shows us how the situation ended in your morning headlines. Well, at this point yesterday morning, the market was doing very well. And right now, pretty much uh, doing the same in positive territory, up about 160 points at 28,157. We have late breaking news just here in our newsroom. A multi-million dollar settlement has been reached in the Brianna Taylor lawsuit. Taylor was killed back in March when Louisville police serving a narcotics warrant at her home shot her several times. Officers found no drugs at her home. Taylor's family sued the police department, accusing them of blindly firing into her apartment. The city of Louisville is expected to announce more details on the lawsuit after this afternoon. In your morning headlines, the California wildfires continue to cause destruction and the Hell's Angel gets an apology and a check. A heroic rescue from a burning car and you may barely believe one of these stories David Sears is going to have. Good morning, David. Hadn't had a bear story in a while. It's been at least a week or two, right? It's a good one, right? This one caught this guy by surprise. Have that for you in just a second. But first, California continues to burn this morning. Firefighters taking on fires literally from the northern border to the southern border. One of the biggest fires they are dealing with is the Creek Fire located in the middle of the state in Fresno County. The fire started back on September 4th. So far, over 212,000 acres have burned. According to the ABC affiliate in Fresno KFSN, the fire is 16% contained, but so far 518 structures have been damaged or completely burned to the ground like this house. Nothing left. A volunteer firefighter even lost his home to the flames. Over 30,000 people have been evacuated from Fresno County. In some areas, the smoke so thick, planes and helicopters used to fight the fires from the air have been grounded. A member of the Hells Angels just got $25,000 from the city of LaSalle, Colorado, and he also got an apology from the police department. This is the settlement between the city and this angel. A couple of Hells Angels were pulled over for allegedly speeding. The officer noticed the men were wearing Hells Angels jackets. One of them happened to be carrying a weapon, so the officer called in to see if there were any felony convictions so they could get him for a weapon. It turns out that there had been an assault at a bar, so the police made the two stand out in traffic lanes for 30 minutes while they brought in eyewitnesses. That's according to their lawyer. Now, while they waited, the officer talked about tasing the two motorcyclists. I'm shooting them. <laughs> I need some paid vacation. Yeah, one of the Hells Angels sued. At first, the city didn't want to settle, but then decided that would be the best course of action. All right, this is a car. It's on fire just off the highway in Colorado Springs. The flames are the result of an explosion. Good news is the driver rescued before the car actually blew up. Five passerbys were able to pull the driver out of the car and get him to safety before the car blew. Amanda Smith stopped to take the video just after the rescue took place. These people not only risk their lives, but they saved this man. If it wasn't for them, there's no way he would have survived. You know, we've gone through so much this past year and just felt so good, kind of like knowing that there's still good people out there that are going to risk their lives to help. Yeah, one of those people was Arturo Yurgiri. He still had blood on his shirt when he got that picture taken. He actually cut off the seat belt to get that driver out, and that driver is expected to recover. And finally this morning, it's been a while since we saw a bear story, but here it is. There's the bear right there. And those are feet right there. That's a guy sitting in the lounge chair, and here comes the bear. Uh, hey, dude, what's up? Well, he licks his toe, and then he's going to reach up and swat his foot. And I'm like, okay, the guy's not waking up. Oh, then the guy wakes up, and the bear runs off. Let me take a picture of the bear eventually. <laughs> if we can hang on to it for a second, you see the bear come back. Where those bushes are right there to the left, I think our, our uh, temp, time and temp is over, but we might be able to see the bear come back, and, and he just, like, oh, walks back in. That's, wow. It was before this. This is a, a reason. So, so he's catnapping. He's just, like, laying there. And the but, bear. David, kind of mm -hmm. question for you. Hey, dude. Would your reaction have been the same or different? <laughs> I have no idea. I don't know what I'd have done if, I'd, if the bear would have been, like, tapping my foot. But the bear ran off, so the guy, I guess he felt a little safe. That's uh, funny. Well, I, hadn't, I hadn't seen that part but, where he pulled out his phone to take a picture. Well, that's, right. that's a yeah. lot of people's first instinct. <laughs> Not mine. Not necessarily mine. Not I don't mine. know. I, I don't know. What were you, I don't know. I have what no do you idea. yell? Do you yell shoe? I don't know. Or, 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 it looks like he was. <laughs> Get away. Yeah, maybe. Scat. Run, do or stuff. just don't say anything. Just but you're not supposed to run away from a bear. That's well, that's what I hear. So, but the bear ran away from him, so I guess he felt felt dark. Problem solved. Dive in the pool, I guess. I don't know. I don't know. No idea.
<laughs> Life's mysteries. Thank you, David Sears. <laughs> Thank you. Let's talk to Justin now, see how things are looking out there. Weather-wise, and uh, pollen count continues to be rather interesting. I know one of the big ones the other day was ragweed. Ragweed. Yes. Yeah, it's back. It's uh -oh. back. I, I felt like a lot of people were having problems this week, at least in the newsroom, a lot mm -hmm. of sniffling and sneezing. Could be ragweed. Also, mold still up there after the uh, recent rains. So there's a look at the numbers today. Ragweed's moderate. Fall elm is moderate, so that's up there, too. Mold is low at 490. And it, just a reminder that uh, fall elm and ragweed tends to kick up this time of year. It peaks in September and October. Ragweed usually lasts till about our first freeze, and then you'll see it go away. Fall elm lasts through about September and then falls off. So that's just what we're dealing with this fall. Heads up there. As far as rainfall goes, we do have some showers and storms well to our south, down there around Brownsville and Corpus, out in the Gulf of Mexico. Still a little bit of a tropical wave out there. It's just sort of sitting there. It's not moving. It's not throwing us any moisture, at least not now, uh, but it is going to help create more rain down there. We may see a few isolated storms today, but there's nothing really to get stuff going. So just a 20% chance of rain for us this afternoon. And as we look at the setup here, we've got uh, high pressure just to our north and east. That is going to move away. And then, of course, you got Sally, which is uh, starting to move a little bit closer to shore this morning. And then we've got this trough of low pressure that will be moving in. This is going to be our rainmaker as we go forward if we get any rain at all, but it looks like our best chances will be uh, Thursday. And uh, again, this high pressure moves away. Here comes the trough, and then we should get some isolated stuff tomorrow too. Maybe a little bit better chance just based on the fact that this will be a little bit closer to us. And then by Thursday, probably our best chance of rain, some scattered showers and storms, some downpours. Not everybody's going to get rain. It's, gonna be a, it's not going to be a huge rainmaker. But at least it brings a little bit of variety to our forecast. Dew points will be pretty high through most of the week, and then they'll fall off this weekend. This shows dew points in the low 60s. I think it probably even goes lower than that. We may see some dew points in the 50s. It'll feel pretty good over the weekend once that drier air moves in. Outside right now, 78 degrees at the airport, 77 stints in, and we've still got a north northeasterly breeze anywhere from 5 to 10 miles per hour. And as far as cloud cover goes, not much of it. We are seeing a bit of uh, morning clouds here and there. Uh, but not a big problem. And temperatures 77 and again at Randolph, 77 at uh, Seguin, 72 in Kerrville this morning, 66. Our cool spot once again out there in Rock Springs. Forecast for today, we should be up around 92 here in San Antonio. That's about where we were yesterday. So we're just going to keep it status quo here. Nothing much changes. Uh, 90 in Gonzales, 90 in Pleasant, and probably a little bit warmer there, maybe some low 90s. Okay, let's talk about Sally. Looking pretty impressive this morning. Uh, and this is going to be a huge rainmaker. It's going to put in some storm surge, but it's slowing down, and that's why we're so concerned about flooding here. Uh, right now, winds are at 85 miles per hour and gusting to 105. It's moving northwest at 2. That's it. So you can imagine that this is going to put down a ton of rain for folks here on the Gulf Coast. Now, as far as New Orleans is concerned, it looks like they're going to sort of miss the worst of this to the west, but places like Biloxi, uh, Pensacola, Category 1 storm, yes, but again, it's the heavy rain, the storm surge that will be the big problems. Winds maybe at around 85 miles per hour, and this bends back towards Atlanta, brings them some heavy rain as well. Here's a look at some of the estimated totals. We're talking 20 inches plus here. So that is going to be just uh, devastating. Some of those areas, especially low-lying areas, and then across parts of Alabama and Georgia eventually as that storm moves north. Forecast for us today. 85 noontime, 92 for a high, 20% chance of rain, and then look for 30% chance tomorrow, 40% chance on Thursday. Still some chances there on Friday too, but that drier air starts to work in. In the weekend, yeah, high temperatures are near 90, but notice the morning lows, 60s. I That'll also feel. noticed the low humidity there. Yeah. That's great news. It'll feel better. All right. Good news. Thank you, Justin. Deal. All Thank right. you, Justin. <laughs> you can go. Thanks. 920 right now, 78 degrees. And Federal Trade Commission warning people about scammers pretending to be tech support agents. What you need to know to protect yourself in this week's Money It's Personal. Welcome back, 923. Many of our viewers are staying at home using their tech more than ever. And with increased use comes increased risk for tech support scams. Ivan Hura tells us how you can spot these types of tech scams in today's Money It's Personal.
Sandra is a college student who learns from home since her campus hasn't opened yet. She's been using her laptop to do her assignments and also pay her bills. Recently, Sandra received a pop-up message that looked like it was from the company that sold her the computer. The company said she had an urgent problem that needed to be fixed and that she needed to call a toll-free number and allow it access to her computer immediately. Luckily, Sandra suspected the pop-up might not be legitimate and looked up the company's number herself and contacted the company to see if the message was real. Scammers will create pop-ups that look like the real deal to get access to your computer, your bank records, or other personal information. So, the FTC is warning consumers and providing some tips on how you can spot a tech support scam. If you get a pop-up that wants you to call a toll-free number, urges you to call immediately, and even threatens loss of personal data, stop and write down the information from the advertisement. Never share access to your computer or information about your bank account, credit card, or social security number with anyone who contacts you. Next, visit FTC.gov and report the scam. Include the phone number you were told to call and any other important information. Make sure to keep your security software up to date and if you need actual tech support, contact a computer technician you trust or a trusted company. Don't just rely on an online search. Finally, you might want to let friends and family know about the scam so that they don't become victims to these criminals. Sandra is now on her way to a great semester and her personal information is safer since she spotted the scam early. For this week's Money It's Personal, I'm Ivan Herrera, KSAT 12 News. Hey Steph, watch out for tech support scams, okay? Thank you, thank now, you for now, letting me know. Now we've let someone we know. <laughs> Hi, six, nine, a resident, you, what time? 925? Yes, 925. 925, 78 degrees. <laughs> San Antonio has the fourth largest Latino population in the U.S. And in honor of Hispanic Heritage Month, we're taking a look at some of the most influential Latinos in our city. Erica Nendez shows us who made the list. For years, Pepsi has focused on caffeinated drinks, but now they want to help you sleep or at least relax. Details on a new drink that eases stress coming up. Hurricane Sally expected to make landfall in the Gulf Coast today when it's set to arrive and how much rain it's expected to bring next. And checking the roads with Trans Guide. Same shot, 281 at 410 on the north side. Traffic looks great. And welcome back. It's 929. This morning, the Gulf Coast is bracing for yet another hurricane as Sally is set to become the fourth named storm to strike the U.S. this year. CNN's Nadia Romero is in Mobile, Alabama with the latest. Hurricane Sally is inching closer to the Gulf Coast. The outer bands bringing wind, rain and flooding ahead of landfall. The path and timing of a slow moving storm is difficult to predict. Whether it goes left or right a little bit, we're still talking about uh, this massive amount of moisture coming on shore. But forecasters say Sally is expected to dump up to four months worth of rain in parts of Alabama, Mississippi and Florida over the next 24 hours. We're talking 10 to 20 inches of rain for portions of coastal Alabama, the Florida panhandle, even getting inland into Alabama. Some areas in here could see 30 inches of rain. The entire region from Florida to Louisiana is also expected to endure tropical storm force winds and a dangerous storm surge. Everything is scary right now. Biloxi, Mississippi's famed Casino Row shut down Monday as flights are canceled and vacationers throughout the region cut their holidays short. Said they had to cancel because of the storm coming in. So we've just been hanging out, but we decided we better go home today. Some residents also heeding warnings to get out of harm's way. I packed up what I need for maybe a couple of weeks because I don't know how much water they'll be here. As others stock up on supplies and plan to ride it out. I live on the water and I'm going to sit right there at the house while it comes in. In Mobile, Alabama, I'm Nadia Romero. And taking a look outside of a live cam this morning, we are at 78 degrees. Not too bad, you know, considering. Yeah, not bad at all. It's uh, it's pretty good here considering what we got going on on the West Coast with all the fires. And then, of course, Sally, you guys just uh, talked about that. It's, it's a dangerous storm. Uh, winds are not as high as they could be, but it's uh, a lot of heavy rain that's going to cause the issues. Let's take a look at the latest satellite picture with Sally, and we'll show you where it's headed right now. Just basically drifting north. Uh, already dumping a lot of heavy rain or already pushing storm surge there and along uh, Mississippi and Alabama. 
The latest data on Sally, winds are at 85 miles per hour, gusting to 105. It's moving northwest at 2 miles per hour. It is crawling, and uh, it will be close to the coast, I think, by early tomorrow morning, uh, making landfall probably sometime tomorrow. But notice again how slow it's going to move, so there's going to be a lot of heavy rain there. Biloxi to Pensacola up through Alabama and parts of Georgia. Locally here, we're at 72, Bernie State, 77, Rio Medina, 77, Randolph, 77. And Stenson forecast calls for a high right around 92. There will be a 20% chance of rain today. A little better rain chance coming up next couple days. We'll have more on that forecast in just a few minutes. Guys? Transguide I-10 at the rim. Construction continues out there. Looks like uh, most lanes are running right now without any problems. And back to 1604 Petranco now for a different view. Well, any traffic we're seeing right now appears to be down towards the front of the road, closer to downtown I-37 at Houston Street. Early voting starts next month and the deadline to register to vote coming up soon, October 5th. Well, tonight there's a big collaboration between Move Texas, a nonpartisan nonprofit, and the Spurs to make sure those who are able to have a chance to register to vote. Max Massey joins us live from the AT&T Center. And the question on everyone's mind, at least here at the Anchor Desk, yes. Max, is where the heck is the coyote? <laughs> <laughs> the Coyote is not here now, but he will be here tonight at about 6 o'clock. Right now, I am joined with Charlie from Move Texas. So, Charlie, we talked about it a little bit at 9 a.m., but what are the logistics? What should people know about tonight? Yeah. Sorry, I'm not as good as Coyote, but, <laughs> but I'm here to help make sure everyone knows that they can get registered to vote tonight. Um, they can come down here to the AT&T Center from 6 to 8. We're going to be over in Lot 3. Just follow the signs on way down here. Uh, we'll have four different lanes of voter registration going on. About 50 volunteers are on end. Uh, on our end, uh, masked up, ready to help you register in your car. And this is the, really the first collaboration between you guys and the Spurs. Why this year? Why is it so important? Yeah, well, voter registration has been severely impacted by COVID-19. And uh, so many folks in Texas, because we don't have online voter registration, can't access this service. And so it's taken all of us stepping up and using our platform to make a difference, to make sure our friends and neighbors can get registered. And so we're just really grateful to partner with the Spurs, who have been such great members of our community. And this is expected to be a quick and efficient and easy process. Is there anything people should know before they come? What do they need to know? Do they go online? Do they need to bring anything? Things like that. Yeah, don't need to bring anything with you. You just need to know either your driver's license number or the last four of your social. Uh, you'll fill out a quick form, sign it. We'll help you figure it all out. Um, and then you'll be right on your way. You can park, take some socially distant photos, um, and then grab a vote t-shirt from the Spurs. Now, statistically, younger voters are less likely to head to the polls. How are you guys targeting that demographic? Yeah, you know, young voters don't have an apathy issue. We have an access issue. We need to make sure that young voters across the state have all the information that they need to be voters this year, especially when it's so confusing under this COVID era. Uh, so they need to know the voter registration deadline is October 5th, rapidly approaching here. Um, and if you can't make it tonight, you can visit movetexas.org slash register, check your voter registration status, and then we'll send you a form, pay postage both ways. You just sign it and throw it back in the mail. All right, Charlie, thank you so much. Thank you. And if you guys have any questions, we have all that information right now. Just head to ksat.com. Mark, Stephanie. Tonight from 6 to 8, thank you very much, Max Massey, live at the AT&T Center. Today is the beginning of Hispanic Heritage Month, and right now on ksat.com, we're taking a look at some of the most influential Latinos of our city. Our Erica Hernandez is joining us live from her home to tell us who's on that list. Good morning, Erica. Hey, Erica. Hey guys, good morning. Well, from chefs and political stars to entertainers, athletes, and personalities bigger than the North Star Mall boots, we've put together a list of 25 influential Latinos in San Antonio. So let me give you a closer look at the list and some of those who are on it. First up, in the culinary restaurant world, we include Chef Johnny Hernandez, the Cortez family, and bar owner, bartender Jarrett Peña. All of them have made huge impacts to the city's food and drink scene over the last decade. As far as those from the art scene, we've included artist Cruz Ortiz, artist and small business owner Cristina Martinez, who we introduced to you this morning on, 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 on Herd, and comedian Larry Garza. Of course, politically, we had to include the Castros, Julian Joaquin and their mother Rosie. Rosie Henry Cisneros is also on the list. Bear County Judge Rosie Speedling Gonzalez and Judge Rosie Alvarado. And we aren't done yet. Some well-known names on that list include actors Jesse Borrego, Ricardo Chavira, 
Singer Allie Brooke, musician Chris Bettis, and one of San Antonio's favorite Spurs, Manu Ginobili. Now, that is not the whole list. You can get a closer look at all 25 right now on KSAT.com. And someone familiar to us, you guys, on the list of inspirational is Latina journalist, our very own Jesse Degollado. Yes, you can see that whole thing. Yeah, so you can feel that you can see the whole list right now on KSAT.com and we'll have continued Hispanic Heritage Month coverage throughout the month and you can also find that on our website. Awesome. Congratulations to Jesse de yeah. Degollado. Yeah, and the, the funny thing about Jesse, she's so humble, she's probably like, Oh no, that's okay, that's okay. I can see her right now, but she deserves to be on that list. <laughs> yes, she does. Erica Hernandez live from home. Thank you. Thanks, Bye, guys. Erica. A couple of years ago I ran into actor Ricardo Chavira. Uh -huh. And I walked up to him and said, uh, Mr. Javier, my name's Mark Austin. I work at KSAT. And he goes, I know who you are. Really? Really? Oh, okay. Very nice. Yes, and then he proceeded to tell me uh, all the bad things that I do on the air. No! I'm kidding. Oh, I'm kidding. No. I'm kidding. <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> like, I'm that's kidding. horrible. No, he's a nice guy. Really <laughs> nice guy. He wouldn't do that. Okay, I hope not. <laughs> 938, 78 degrees. And Taco Bell just recently took out a few items from its menu, but now... Adding a new wine. Still ahead, what the jalapeno noir tastes like. And no, it's not jalapenos. Then why do they call it jalapeno noir? Uh, be sneaky. Ask know. Ricardo. We'll see. <laughs> 941, weird consumer news today. A different meatless meat now available. And wine with your tacos? <laughs> Our David Sears is back to explain that. Good morning. Very strange. It all fits with these strange times we're living in right now. So we're going to start with something like normal and then we'll work our way to the weird. Okay. With so many people staying at home because of the pandemic, FedEx busy and they plan on getting busier over Christmas. So they're going to hire 70,000 workers for the holiday season. The majority will be seasonal workers and oh, since there's some big demand for shipping these days. They plan to raise their shipping rates starting in January. So get your deliveries done like now. All right, Beyond Meat is adding a food to their product line. Beyond Meat is a plant-based meat supplier. In other words, they use plants and other ingredients to make food taste like meat. Uh, they do that, don't know. They have burgers and sausage. You can't call them burgers if they don't have meat. Now they are adding meatballs. And how you call them meatballs with no meat, I don't know. You can get them at <laughs> Whole Foods, Stop and Shop, Kroger starting next month. A 12 pack, $6.99. They say the meatballs have 30% less saturated fat and sodium. So I heard it's they're healthier. I heard, heard they're pretty good, actually. Are, are they? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. I, Do they I taste like meat, though? I don't know. See, I haven't committed to trying them yet. Uh, okay. you, you try it and let us know. Right. I, I just, think it'll be okay if it's I, healthier. But right? how do you use the word meat if there's no meat in them? Uh, you can't call them meatballs. You new call segment. Them like plant balls or <laughs> Meatless Monday starting next week. <laughs> right here on GMS Ooh. <laughs> This pandemic we are trying to live through causes a lot of stress for some people. The makers of Pepsi, PepsiCo, coming up with a new option for stress relief. It's a new drink called Driftwell. It is designed to ease stress and help you relax. The drink is full of an amino acid that helps you get calm, improves your focus, helps you sleep. You can get it online later this year and in stores early next year. I like the name. So you got to stress out ordering it online so you can de-stress. <laughs> and you can relax once yeah. it arrives. There you go. It's, it's the new melatonin, drift well. There you yeah. go. All right, this is one y'all been talking about. Have you ever thought of a glass of wine with your taco or enchilada or chalupa? I'm sure some people have. And what kind of wine would it be? Taco Bell. Yes, Taco Bell has come up with a jalapeno nor a wine to go with your, te what? How do you say it? Nor? Noir? Noir. Is that like French or something? Yeah, actually, I think it is. <laughs> <laughs> I don't speak French. A wine to go with your Tex-Mex selection. And don't let the name fool you. It's not hot. It doesn't taste like jalapenos, but it comes from a vineyard in Ontario, Canada. So explain that one. There's a wild cherry, a, che a wild strawberry, a cherry, and a beetroot. Mm. If you mm. want to try it, you're going to have to go to Canada. Or you can get it off the Canadian website for 19 bucks. Say that again, New York. Noir. 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 I don't mm -hmm. drink wine, so I don't. I, that, you know. The picture is interesting. It almost looks fake, like it's not a, I know, a real and I, wine. And I'm looking for it, and I don't, I'm not finding it. Uh, I mean, I Googled, you know, how can you buy this stuff? But, you um, Googled the Taco Bell website? Yeah, yeah but I, not, I, I need it's not to look. here locally. And yeah. I know they said Canada, and I know we're not yeah. in Canada, but I'll do some more research. Yeah, yeah check well, that maybe out. it'll get here sooner than we think. Right. So you can have a meatless taco and jalapeno nor or whatever. And then sip a drift well and go to sleep. <laughs>
<laughs> we're covered. We are. Uh, there you <laughs> Thank go. You, David. Thank you very much, David. <laughs> Justin's back. What are you planning, Justin Horn? None, none of that makes sense. All of that. <laughs> Just wild. Welcome stuff. to Surely. 2020, Justin. <laughs> Surely one of those items. It doesn't. Even, you'll try. It doesn't even have uh, jalapeno in it. That's the uh, the confusing part. Yeah, but it has beetroot. Does have beetroot. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Wine connoisseurs are going to be all over that. Okay, let's talk about what's going on out west. We have the fires, right? It's a big deal. Fires lining up from uh, California up to Oregon and Washington. Uh, just a ton of issues out on the West Coast, as you know. And this is a look at the smoke forecast. So what we can see here is the smoke in the atmosphere, and there's a lot of it from those fires and kind of where it's headed. It stays pretty much out west, but some of it uh, does try to move towards the middle part of the country. We've actually seen a little bit of dust concentration in parts of the Texas Panhandle and West Texas. Not much here. I've had that question asked. Uh, my allergies are kicking up. Are we getting any smoke from the fires? Not that we can really tell. Uh, there, there could be a little bit of a concentration there, but most of it is staying out west, and there's some pretty thick smoke. It's going to be a problem for a while. There's still a lot of fires burning there, and it uh, looks like it'll get uh, maybe a little bit worse before it gets better. Outside here, 78 degrees. Dew point is at 69. North northeast Julie winds at about 7. We've got partly cloudy skies. A little bit of cloud cover out there, not much. You'll find some clouds as you go north up 281. Uh, and to parts of Kamau County, then out around uh, New Braunfels, we've seen a little bit of cloud cover. 80 in New Braunfels, 77 in Seguin, 79 Pleasanton, 78 in Uvalde, 68 right now in Rock Springs. That continues to be the cool spot. And as far as dew points go, they will still be high today. We actually had a little bit of a heat index yesterday. We'll probably keep that again today. Dew points will stay in the upper 60s, close to 70. But uh, by the weekend, we do think that these uh, numbers will drop off some. This says 62. I think we probably drop into the 50s for dew points. And that'll make it feel so much better. It'll still be pretty warm Saturday and Sunday, but the drier air will shift in, and that will make for cooler mornings, too, which uh, is nice this time of year. Uh, radar and satellite shows we've got some showers and storms down here along the uh, Texas Gulf Coast. Uh, this is that tropical wave that's just sort of been sitting there. Doesn't do much, but it has been throwing some moisture towards Brownsville and Corpus. We've seen some showers out in Mexico. Not much here around San Antonio yet. We could see a couple of isolated storms today. It's possible. Uh, and the reason for that, we've got a little bit of a trough of low pressure starting to build out in New Mexico. And today, it's not really close to us, so uh, anything we see today is going to be pretty isolated. But as we get into tomorrow, it gets a little bit closer. We'll start to see some of that moisture in place, and so there could be some isolated storms tomorrow for sure. And then more scattered on Thursday, probably our best chance of rain on Thursday. And that may linger over into Friday before this thing gets out of here. Uh, so we will have some better rain chances. We've been talking about the tropics too, just how incredibly busy. It, yesterday we had five named storms out there. Today it's just four. Uh, so uh, we got Vicky, Paulette, Teddy, and Sally. We got rid of Renee. Uh, and you see that one system down there south of Texas that uh, we're still watching. The chances are really pretty low of development. And then there's this one here coming off the coast of Africa, which looks like it could develop into Wilfred. So we may use all the names by the time we're uh, done with this week. Uh, looking at Sally, looks a little bit better this morning. Uh, still winds are at 85 miles per hour. Looks like it is taking out a little bit of wind shear, which is probably why it's not uh, strengthening further. Still, it's going to be a huge problem for Mobile, Pensacola, uh, towards Destin. They're going to get a ton of heavy rain. Right now, winds are at 85 miles per hour, gusting to 115. It's moving northwest at 2. It is crawling. And so the, we think this will be a Cat 1 storm when it makes landfall tomorrow morning and then slowly making its way through parts of Alabama and eventually Georgia, dropping heavy rain all along the way. Forecast for us, 85 degrees by noontime. We'll be up around 92. We will put in a 20% chance of rain. A lucky few may get a shower or storm this afternoon. Our odds go up a little bit tomorrow, 30% chance, and then a 40% shot Thursday and Friday, and lower humidity this weekend, guys. Highs right around 90, both Saturday and Sunday. Okay, and just so you know, folks, I can't find that jalapeno noir anywhere. Mm. It's uh, available at a couple Taco Bells up in Hamilton and Toronto, Canada. Maybe it'll, you know, make an appearance down here. Maybe. Someday. Certainly has us talking, doesn't it? Yes, it does. 949, 78 degrees. And still ahead on GMSA at 9, you may start to see more robot employees at stores. How one company in Tokyo is already ahead of the game.
And some good news this morning. A young boy's love for animals gave him an idea on how he could help them. 10-year-old Jackson Welch from Maine has raised more than $3,600 for charity all by using his trampoline. Spent 24 hours jumping, eating, and sleeping on it to raise money for the Animal Refuge League of Maine. He calls it the 24-hour trampoline challenge, and why wouldn't you, right? The idea started when he and his family lost their cat. The family has since adopted a new kitten. Hey, check this out. A store in Japan ahead of the game had set up its first robot employee. The robot's name is Model T after the iconic Ford automobile from the 1900s. It's seven feet tall, has three fingers on each of its two hands, along with cameras, microphones, and sensors. It looks scary. <laughs> Model T can grasp objects and stock shells. It's controlled remotely by a virtual reality setup. The Japanese startup Telexistence developed Model T and the robots can be rented out. Well, this is a once in a lifetime Airbnb rental. Actor Will Smith inviting people in Los Angeles County to book an Airbnb vacation in his wing of the iconic Fresh Prince of Bel Air home next month. And the price, only $30 a night in honor of the 30 years since the Fresh Prince premiered. Guests will have access to Smith's bedroom, bathroom, a poolside lounge, and dining room. Bookings open on September 29th. Good morning. Hey there. Coming up on Live, Jimmy Kimmel talks about hosting the upcoming Emmys. Plus, we learned some easy knife skills on Live. See you soon. And tomorrow on GMSA at 9, get ready for lunch. In this week's Katie Science Lab, Katie Blake is teaching us how to make rockets out of film canisters. Right, here's what you're going to need. Empty film canisters or small pill bottles, water, and Alka-Seltzer. Tune in tomorrow to see how it all comes in together. Thank God it said uh, tune in. I thought she needed tuna as part of our <laughs> Like, oh, list of right. items. I was like, oh for, no, that's going to yeah, be disgusting. That's going <laughs> to smell like heck. Ooh. Anyway, Justin. David would still be excited though. Right. Uh, 92 degrees today. We'll see about a 20% chance of rain, 30% chance tomorrow, 40% chance Thursday and Friday, and look for some lower humidity over the weekend. Some of you have been very, very busy at home during the pandemic, and you've you've done some amazing home and room and even like uh, porch renovations. Yeah, uh, a lot of our viewers have uh, sent us pictures. There you have 15 quarantine home renovations from our viewer, viewers. We have before and after pictures that are pretty impressive. Yeah, I mean, we're talking about a pretty amazing level of detail considering these are mainly do-it-yourself projects. There there's some pretty good landscaping. You saw that nice. uh, that chimney renovation on the other. Others are things like paint or flooring. Yeah, and some uh, some people have redone their bathrooms. And then there was one. The first picture was there was like a whole, like a chimney area. That was that was pretty neat. Then like there was like there was a whole lot of difference, but the small difference that they you know the small work that they did it made a big difference. Right. Changing oh, here's the closet. The closet. That's renovation. my favorite part. <laughs> yes, I knew you would be all about about that one. <laughs> some of these are are pretty uh, difficult though. I mean, like a Mike Osterhage level of craftsmanship. Oh, We're goodness. talking about. Sure. Well, we we did the closet. Let's go ahead and do a new deck. I, right. Yes. Yeah. And, well, and you did it. Some yes. people. And congrats on the work. We enjoy seeing your pictures.